Hi, it's um, Mr. T here. In the video today, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at how to solve force problems uh, using free body force diagrams and some trigonometry techniques using right angle triangles. So here's um, an example of a problem here. So we have a child is supported by a parent on a swing. The chain of the string, uh, swing of the string is at 30 degrees to the vertical. Draw a vector diagram for the situation to calculate the size of the tension force and the size of the reaction force. Okay, so before we start, I just want to say um, the first sentence here, it says the child is supported. Now, if a child is supported, they're being held, and that means that the child is at a constant velocity. They're at zero meters per second. Therefore, that tells us that the forces are going to be balanced in this situation. This is important for when I draw my forces. So here's a diagram, okay? Notice on the diagram, we've got uh, from this string here or the chain to the vertical straight down here, that's gonna be 30 degrees. I'm going to draw a force now that goes away from the center of the mass here of the child, upwards along the chain here, and that's gonna be the tension force. There'll be one directly downwards, looking like this. And then I'm gonna draw a reaction force, and that's the force that the adult is pulling backwards, holding the child from swinging uh, down on the swing. Now these force arrows, I can take each one of these force arrows now and I can use them to produce a triangle. So the first one I'm gonna take here is the tension arrow. There it is, I'll place that there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take each of these force arrows and place them tip to tail. So I start here, Here's the tail of the tension arrow. Here's its tip. So at the tip here, I'm going to place the next force arrow. That's my gravity one here. So I'm going tip to tail. They're following each other. And then I'm going to add the final one, and we've got a reaction force. Now notice when I put all of these three arrows together, they started at the same place where they end. That's because the resulting um, force... Well, the overall force is zero for these three forces. That's because it's at constant velocity and the forces are balanced. So in this case, also notice that because the force of gravity and the reaction force are always perpendicular to each other, we have a right angle triangle. So this is important because now we can go and use this right angle triangle um, and do some trigonometry with it to solve the problems that we might have. So let's look in more detail at this problem here. Okay, so the first uh, thing let's look at is we can work out the force of gravity acting on the child. So we can work out this vector here um, because the force of gravity equals the mass times the gravity constant or 40 times 9.8. There we go, we've got that there, force of gravity, 392. Now. This is at three significant figures at the moment. Notice that the data we were given was only two significant figures. Instead of rounding it at this point, we're gonna keep it at three significant figures and use this um, as we calculate the rest of our answers. Okay, so let's construct that triangle we had from the last slide. Um, and remember this angle here between this arrow here, which is the angle of the tension force, and the vertical line going down here is 30 degrees. So I'm gonna put that in. So now what I have is I have a 30 degree angle and I have um, a known value that is adjacent to the angle. If I want to find out what the hypotenuse is here and the tension force, that's the first one here, is the hypotenuse, I have an adjacent that I know and a hypotenuse that I don't and an angle. So I'm going to use a cosine because a cosine theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Then I re rearrange this because I want to find the hypotenuse. And then remember the easy, easy way is just to swap something that's on the top on one side with something that's a denominator on the other. I just do that switch and I've rearranged this equation here. Now I substitute in the values. Okay, so the tension force equals 392 newtons divided by the cosine of the angle. And I do my calculation. My tension force is 400 and 53. But because my two values were only given to two significant figures, 
going to round this answer to two significant figures and get 450. That's, so now we've collected the tension force, we can go on and we can do the reaction force. If we want to do the reaction force, we still have to use the initial data we had. We can't, every time we use, uh, we have to go back to the source data as close as we can every time we do a calculation. So I'm going to use this adjacent side to find this opposite side. So because I'm going to use adjacent to find opposite, um, remember the acronym SOCAR TOA, I'm going to use TOA, tan equals opposite over adjacent. Okay, opposite over adjacent, rearrange again, but when I rearrange this time, I take a denominator, when I move it to the other side, it multiplies to the value. So opposite equals tan times adjacent. Substitute in my values, do my calculation, and I get 226 newtons. Remember the last thing we have to do here is do our rounding to two significant figures, 230 newtons. Cool. So this is how we use the trigonometry and our force diagram to solve some complex problems. Let's look at another. Okay, so here's uh, the next example. Um, so in this example, we've got a 65 kilogram girl on a skateboard. Uh, she's going downhill with an incline of 12 degrees at a constant velocity. Remember, constant velocity means the forces must all be balanced. So when we draw them in a triangle, they're going to follow tip to tail and start and end at the same place. And they want to know the size of the reaction force only this time. Um, we're going to assume that the skateboard has no mass, so we're just going to use uh, 65 kilograms. So the first thing that we can do here is we can calculate the um, size of the gravity force because we know the mass of the girl. Um, no, sorry, here's the triangle first. Uh, put all of the um, forces tip to tail. Uh, remember that the friction force is parallel to the surface and the reaction force is perpendicular to the surface. So they are 90 degrees to each other, so I can draw that 90 degree angle at the top. Um, the friction force we can work out uh, equals the mass times the gravity constant, which is 65 times 9.8. And we get 637, so we'll put that over on the hypotenuse there. That's 637, the uh, hypotenuse value. So we want to find the adjacent value. So using the so car toa, we're going to use the cosine here. So um, cosine theta equals a over h. I want to find out what the adjacent side is, the fr side. So I uh, move the h from the denominator and multiply it to the cosine theta and we get the rearranged equation there. So I take that and we're going to substitute the values in. So the theta we're going to substitute in 12 degrees. The hypotenuse we're going to substitute in 637 and then we're going to carry out that calculation to get our answer, which is 627. Again, we look at our original data. We see our original data is just uh, two significant figures in each of our data here. So the smallest number of accurate, smallest accuracy is two significant figures. So we're going to put our answer to two significant figures, 630 newtons. Now, one thing I, um, that is often uh, a, a lot of people have a question here is why is it that this is 12 degrees? Um, the angle here, what, why is this angle here 12 degrees? Well, it so happens that this, the angle, they said the angle between the horizontal and the ramp here is 12 degrees. Now, because the gravity force is 90 degrees uh, to the horizontal, and the reaction force is 90 degrees to the perpendicular, sorry, not to the perpendicular, to the ramp, to the surface, because they're both 90 degrees to these two, they must be the same angle difference between the reaction force and gravity as the horizontal and the surfaces. So when the angle theta is 12 degrees, the angle between the horizontal and the ramp surface is 12 degrees. Since Fg is, well, I'm not going to read all that. That's why this is 12 degrees. If you want to go over and ha have a read of this to work it out, you can. Um, yeah, and this is how we solve uh, force problems using trigonometry and force vectors. 
okay, hope this has been helpful.